so many items to get to in so little time. This is the D-Dot Podcast. I am D-Respect. I'm here. You're there. I have no idea how you're doing because I cannot hear you. If you're speaking to your phone, if you're speaking to your computer, you are a maniac in need of serious psychiatric or psychological. I don't even know the difference. What's the difference? Somebody told me that the difference between the two is you can... uh, uh, a, a psychiatrist can prescribe you medicine and a psychologist is basically just a therapist. I think that's what it is or vice versa. I'm not really sure, but that's really the difference between the two. Uh, both can talk to you, but only one can give you meds. And with that being said, welcome to the podcast. I did not do it last week. So as you can see, the podcast is just a little bit longer than the others. I made promises to people that I was going to drop the podcast last Friday, but I mean, I got to tell you, uh, D's life has changed uh, dramatically uh, over the past week, week and a half, just, um, you know, just minor things in my personal life that, that are very minor from a surface level standpoint, but speak to the core of the person that I am. There's always got to be one moment in the podcast where I sound like an absolute fucking dahoosh. <laughs> there has to be just one moment. I just I can't help myself. I am a self congratulatory douche. It's part of of constantly listening to affirmations and and drinking in self help constantly. You you listen to enough self help, you're gonna talk about yourself like you're Muhammad Ali constantly, and people are gonna look at you like you make twelve dollars an hour. You shouldn't be speaking like that. Which speaks to the to to, to really how people think. I mean. Uh, when you think about it, that speaks to the psychology of people. Um, if you do speak greatly of yourself and then people look at your circumstances and sort of say like, well, you don't deserve to be that because then what they are basically doing is speaking about themselves. They are they are saying that they don't deserve to speak about themselves like that, because if you look at their circumstances and it's anything but extraordinary, then they don't feel like they're enough. Once you get into your 30s, guys, you really pick up on just how poorly people speak about themselves. And the people who speak about themselves, you can you could basically see how they carry themselves the whole day. And it makes sense. It makes sense because, of course, the self-talk that you have in your head is horrible. Of course you're going to be horrible and unhealthy and constantly tired and every obstacle seems like a, a, a unbearable activity to you because you feel like you're not enough, ultimately. All right, and enough with, with, the, with the self-help bullshit. But yes, this is the D-Dot Podcast and I am D-Respect. I'm here, you're there. I listened to the Book of Ryan last week. Okay, I listened to the book of Ryan last week and I listened to it uh, a bit over the weekend. And I really have to tell you that it's basically the best album I've heard all year. I don't think that's saying a whole lot. I mean, it means something. I listened to half of Post Malone's album and I sort of liked it. Uh, I'll listen to the rest of it maybe later tonight, and I'll tell you guys how I, how I feel about it. I'm of course I'm no album reviewer, so when I tell you about an album, it's when I get a hold of it. Don't give me any shit about it. you're talking about it. It's like two weeks ago. Don't give me any of that shit. I I really do do not give two shits about when I communicate how I feel about an album to you. When I get to it, I get to it. But um, the Book of Ryan was so solid, man. I mean, there were so many songs that I liked, but just beyond that. I, you know, the, the, the cliche about an album uh, when it comes to a veteran, when a veteran is releasing an album and we've visibly seen that they've gone through their ups and their downs, the typical thing that people always say is, this album is a maturation. You know, it's a sign of my maturation and my growth. And then when you listen to the records, they basically sound like the shit they made five years ago. This doesn't sound like Royce from five years ago. I mean, this sounds like Royce after therapy. You know, I found that out through the interviews that he's done, that he's been very he heavy off the therapy. And it seems to me like it's diving deep into daddy issues. You know, 
So even though I didn't want to give you guys self-help, this this episode is just going to contain so much of it. I mean, so much of the music that we love nowadays just lends itself to that whole umbrella, just lends itself to going inside yourself and improving yourself. You know, it's all about self-actualization. It's all about that. I mean, the album is a deep dive into cocaine, which was my, my favorite record on the album cocaine is so solid um dumb was also great i love the feature by boogie i've never even heard boogie before but that was a great uh that was a great feature power uh life is fair of course the j cole feature uh and i'll name a few others but um that, that it, it's a deep dive on daddy issues it's a deep dive on uh addictive personalities and you can tell he's just been locked in to that universe and maybe some people will sigh at me when I say this but I think this this would be a perfect time to collaborate with Joe Button because I feel like now Royce is in that frame of thinking now where I'm gonna go inside and I'm going to try to fix all these things about me. And that's been Joe Button's MO since mood music. You know, this has been Joe Button's MO years ago. I mean, I get it. Joe doesn't rap anymore. Joe's the media guy. But I think this would be a perfect time for them to uh, collaborate. I've noticed that they've had, you know, some issues about um, business practices as far as Slaughterhouse and all that jazz. But <clears throat> I think it'd be a great time for them to collaborate. But that's neither here nor there. But, um, a lot of the music that we like nowadays is all about deep dives. It's all about going in yourself. And basically, good songs are conversations that you wouldn't tolerate from strangers, but you're okay listening to it on a song. You know, if a guy came up to you and he's telling you about his 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 cocaine issues and his dad and all this shit, you're just going to be like, God damn it, why me? Why, why do I have to be the person that at two o'clock in the morning I'm at this get together and I got to listen to this guy about his bullshit with him and his dad and cocaine but on a record it's great on a record it works on a record you know Royce is giving you his best project ever this thing is is is, is great I mean even even the sketches even the skits worked um you know who are you who are you worked you know, the, the, there was a meaning behind it. There's so many, so many songs that you, so many albums that you listen to, and it seems like skits are just filler. They don't really serve any purpose whatsoever. Um, and also on the uh, on the summer on lock, he quoted Jay Z. Uh, he quoted Jay Z on Hovey Baby. Uh, I'm so far ahead of my time about to start another life. Look behind you. I'm about to pass you twice. <laughs> so fast, niggas can't get past my past. How they supposed to appear with my perfect present. Want to unwrap the gift and a curse in one session. Ain't no living person could test them. Only two resting in heaven could be mentioned in the same breath as them. You get, you, you get that? You get that? Hobie, baby. Look that song up if you haven't heard it before. Um, I believe it's on the Blueprint 3. But um, Royce quoted him on that. I don't think I don't think I've ever seen Royce um, just literally uh, take lyrics from a rapper, sort of like Jay Z always did with Biggie. So I felt that that that, that was interesting too, and also great features on that song um, uh, by Jada Kiss and others. And Amazing was a great track too. I'm all over the place. I'm all, but the the point is, I loved the album. I loved it. I'm going to continue to listen to it. Other tracks that I may not love may grow on me. It's not going to be legendary. That song is horrid. Get it off my plate. I don't want it. It's like fucking sauerkraut. It's like get it get it away from me and get it off my hot dog. That song is awful. Um, but I think other songs are going to work their way into my playlist. But it's, it's really phenomenal. Um, Royce has always been dynamic to me in terms of his delivery in in terms of his delivery Royce has always been top tier of course he's always been around M so he's he's always been in M shadow but uh I mean even when he went at M he he, he always felt like he was the only person that was capable 
of outdoing M at least in one category, which is at least in in the what you guys have to listen to. What was that D12 disc that he did? Uh, he did the D12 disc over. It was it was over Freeway's beat. What we do, even though what we do is wrong. And the way Royce came into that thing was just like steady hanging man how's the beef i'm the hardest in the streets i can honestly compete with any nigga in the game my honesty is deep peep the nigga silver chain no diamonds in the beef. just the way he just cut it up was like god damn it m don't let this motherfucker come at your head <laughs> don't let him come at your head because he can he can outdo you he can definitely outdo you so royce Royce has always had that to me, but I've never looked at Royce as a lyricist. You know, that's just me. I've never looked at Royce as a, as a lyricist, uh, not much of a of a punchline rapper, just somebody who's who's able to execute um, flows and delivery so well. But with this album, the lyrics were given to you. I mean, the lyrics were definitely given to you. Before this, my favorite Royce record was. Uh, something that he did about what was it a year ago was it the tabernacle let's see royce tabernacle okay yeah that was a phenomenal record two years ago tabernacle was this great record that that uh that royce came out with where he was he was basically detailing the day of uh uh, the, the most the craziest day in his life was, was the day that he met Eminem, his grandmother died, and his son Royce was born. All of those things happened in one day. You know, um, Eminem basically would represent his just that that's a huge career relationship. That's a huge relationship for Royce. Um, obviously his grandmother dying and his child being born and he, you know, he goes through the details of, you know, losing his grandmother. Um, he felt terrible about it and, you know, basically, and they were in that, they, they were in the same hospital, by the way, his grandmother died in the very same hospital that his son was born. So, you know, going from one waiting room to another, you sort of feel lesser than in, you know, because it's a double edged sword. You know, you either go here, you go there, you want to show concern for your dead family member, but you also are, you know, you're you're uh, you're full of joy because you 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 had a child. But um, lyricism there is great. Voice is just really good at lyricism when it comes to speaking about his life. I mean, there are tons of forms of of lyricism and i think commonly what's known as lyricism is just is theoretical miracle spiritual lyrical that's what most people consider lyricism but people don't give enough credit to writing a story and giving you the lesson the morals in the story while while still chronologically detailing everything in the story and everything unravels at the end i mean that is storytelling that is lyricism you know tupac doesn't get enough credit for that because he wasn't you know there aren't a lot of tupac quotables tupac quotables sound like uh they sound like proverbs you know i don't i don't mean to grandize tupac too much i'm not really a fan of uh, you know of, of doing that but they do they sound like they sound like proverbs. They don't sound like lyrics. It doesn't sound like cannabis, you know. So it's very different um, spectrums of lyricism, but both still lyrical nonetheless. Um, so it's a great album. I mean, I mean, what 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 more can I tell you about it? I'll continue listening to it. Hopefully, you guys have listened to it as well, of course, because it's 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 been just been out for so long now. It's been out for so long now, and now I'm talking about it. You hear me? That's me out just poking you in your chest. You, what are you, 18? Something drops today, and then it's like it's, that's it. It's like four or five days, and and then it's not relevant anymore. It's just, it's gone. It just does not count anymore. Oh, man. You know, lyricism is is taking a hit right now because l lyricism has the benefit of <clears throat> lyricism has the benefit of standing out because there's so much filler and fluff 
with the music out there in the mainstream. I don't have to mention any names. You guys already know them and hate them. Um, but lyricism is underscored because there's so little people on the grand scale doing it well, you know, but where lyricism is kind of being hurt, I think it's in the online conversation. I think it's in the online conversation of, of a J. Cole album being dropped and then it's the true meaning behind J. Cole's album. It's uh, it's Childish Gambino's This Is America and the true meaning of what this song means. This is what I told you years ago uh, and, and years ago. I mean, listen, Hove did that so hopefully you won't have to go through that. Don't. Don't smash your head up against the wall into a million pieces. D told you years ago that Rap Genius was bringing something so unique and so great, but God damn it, is it so hurtful. It's just, it's, it's just so hurtful to, to the hip hop conversation because, because now everything is just fact. That's what that means. That's what it means. I understand that people, you know, they come in and, uh, you know, artists, they, they verify certain things and that's indeed what it means. That's fine. But, you know, I would even argue that that's problematic too. I shouldn't use the word problematic. I should probably use the word, it's just annoying. It's just, don't, just walk away from it. You know, I appreciate an artist who makes their music and leaves it up to your interpretation. Just, I, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to... I don't want to walk you through every song. You know, of course, they'll discuss it and, you know, they'll discuss their moods and the song and everything like that. And, you know, once in a while, they'll point things out. But to just like go through every detail of every song and this is the meaning of that. And I said this and I said that because then it's like, well, OK, well, I don't have to wonder there. All right. So moving along, I feel like the music doesn't live as long because you know the answers already you walk away from it and so much of what music is so much of what rap is and you'll have to excuse me because rap may mean something different to me than it does to you but so much of what it was was wonder so much of what a lyric is is a is, is a pathway into a different frame of thinking, into just a different possibility, an idea that you'll have. So when you answer everything with this is the true meaning of it, you'll see it in comment sections. You'll see it in comment sections where people say, well, no, this is they, 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 this just isn't right. I, I think I think uh, uh, I, I did the Childish Gambino um I spoke about the Childish Gambino last week, the This Is America, and and somebody literally told me in the comment section, fuck if, uh, go fuck yourself, by the way, if you're listening. No, I'm just kidding. Um, said something like, uh, you got this all wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the guy said every commentator, <laughs> every commentator is wrong about this song. Well, then it's, well, it's, it's great because you figured it out. So, I mean, do you, do you understand how ridiculous that is? Do you understand how ridiculous that is that you are listening to commentary and you somehow think that there is a key that you have in your hand where you've unlocked what this song is? Now, don't get me wrong. An opinion's an opinion. You know, we're all going to have our, our opinions. I obviously am, am very feel very strongly about my opinions, but I only feel strong about my opinions because I know... It's just an opinion. So it really doesn't matter. So every commentator has this wrong is ridiculous. There is no wrong. There is no wrong. If an artist comes and spoils it and says, well, this is the definition of this and that's the definition of that, then you know, you just walk away from it and you're like, well, okay, well, that's fine. A way to take the fun out of that and whatever. But nobody has it wrong. Okay. That's what art is. Okay, rap is art. I don't. I don't know how to break it to you guys. Rap is it's art. So something that I see can be something completely different from what you see. You know, that's when you start realizing. The older you get, there's nuances to things. There's layers. There's levels to things. It's not just one view. There's 
80 things going on in This Is America. There are plenty of things. There's choreography going around. If somebody made a fucking video and said, this, move, th this, this video is about the, the amazing choreography done by fill in the blank of whoever the fuck did the choreography for the video or the camera work or the editing or whatever the fuck and you go to the comment section and say you uh, i think you got i think you got it wrong you got oh does he does he have it wrong see this is where lyricism suffers lyricism suffers because now we will dissect it and we will find the answers as if it's science i hate to break it to you music is is it's it's faith <laughs> music is religion it's not science there's not an answer on the back of the book there's not absolute coordinates or a formula music is to be interpreted by the listener yes it has its meaning understand that get through get it through your head this is when they say think out of the box. This is what we're doing now. We're existing outside of the box, ladies and gentlemen. You want to be inside the box and tell me that uh, This Is America is about the death of blacks. And, 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 and it is. And it is. But it can be about whatever the fuck you want it to be or whatever the fuck you see it as. Okay? That's just an opinion from a guy on YouTube, of course. Feel free in the comment section to tell me I don't know what the fuck I'm, tell uh, I'm, I'm talking about. And please, if you've listened uh, this long, I want you to say exactly that. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And I'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll just pin you or whatever the fuck. But yeah, but, but lyricism is taking a hit for that reason. It's taking a hit in my view because uh, it's, it's being glorified because we have so much shit out there. But now everything is ran through this filter that takes the life out of it when it gets just tossed through the uh, uh, when it gets tossed through the, the gauntlet of, of online content and understand understand when I tell you this. I mean, this is coming from the guy who in, you know, who six seven years ago was comparing little wayne to hitler you know not in the terrible sense but comparing little wayne's um comparing little wayne's claim to be the greatest rapper of all time comparing it to hitler's propaganda tactic of the big lie theory you know so i've always been the person who takes something that has nothing to do with it whatsoever and compares it to different things and and makes video essays i understand that world more than most people do i understand that world and and as a matter of fact, I think I contributed to that world that exists on YouTube a lot where you see a lot of people doing hip hop essays because um, nobody was fucking doing it five, six years ago. But um, so I understand that world a lot. So I'm not saying that it's terrible or anything like that, but it's just it's just gotten out of hand. It, it, it really, 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 really has. And maybe it's as I'm becoming older, becoming more of a curmudgeon about music. Uh, definitely past being a snob about music. I think so. Um, I, I really don't give a shit what you listen to. I really don't give a shit what you like. Uh, what you like is what you like. Uh, I've always been an advocate for there is no such thing as real hip hop. It's all hip hop and you can't just take this out because it's not, you know, it, it, it it's not what you see as hip hop, you know, while at the same time understanding that there is a difference between the word hip-hop and the word rap and knowing that there's a difference between a uh a rapper and an mc i'm sorry i burped i was like turkey and provolone uh with wheat with nuts in it i'm not a fan of nuts in bread <clears throat> but i eat it anyway uh, but I'm not a I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of just nuts in food in general. Like if I go to a Thai restaurant and there's nuts in the food, I always tell them like there isn't nuts in this. I, I and I'm serious about it. Like there can literally be no description of nuts whatsoever in the menu, and I will tell the waiter there's no nuts in this. Right? I I cannot stand nuts in food. I love nuts. Just take that sound bite right there and somebody just uh, just loop it. I love nuts. D-Respect loves nuts. Um, 
I love nuts. I love peanut butter. I enjoy I enjoy nuts, but for whatever reason, I just I just don't mix it uh, in my food. It's it's very uh, it's it's parallel to uh, liking a certain friend, but a certain friend doesn't mix within a certain crowd of people. I mean, you guys are social engineers out there. You know how that works. You know that if you have a friend that you like, eh, but he's a little funny, you don't bring him around that friend because maybe that friend's a little confrontational. Maybe that friend tells it like it is, and they will straight up tell you, don't bring this motherfucker around me, or vice versa, or this person's awkward, this person's a bit, uh, you know, whatever. It's the same with nuts. So there you go. Uh, Social dynamics by D-Respect through the analogy of nuts in the bread. See what I just did there? This is exactly what I've been doing for five or six years. This is what I've been doing on uh, five or six years on YouTube. I've been, I've been talking about uh, Little Wayne, Hitler, nuts and bread, social dynamics, all that fun stuff. All right, I'm babbling right now. I also wanted to get to uh, Iggy Azalea discussing uh, Cardi B. And I wanted to talk about this briefly too because Iggy Azalea isn't somebody that you should really take seriously. Uh, I know that's... Um, that may come as a big surprise, but I don't think she's somebody that you could take seriously. Um, she's been somebody in the past that's um, said some pretty offensive things towards black women. Um, she's made a lot of weird comments to people regarding their color. Um, so she attacked Nick, uh, not Nikki. She attacked uh, Cardi, you know, saying that Cardi's a caricature of a black woman and and. Uh, she misspells words and she's all about stupidity and look i mean nobody is going to argue with with uh with a Z- i don't know if i said Iz- iggy azalea uh before somebody somebody correct me on that i don't know if azalea banks um uh no i'm sorry nobody can argue that cardi and who cardi has behind her has an agenda they have an agenda, but I don't ever think these agendas are as nefarious as people think that they are or as malicious as people think they are. It's just it makes it easier when the public is malleable, when the public is docile. It's easier for them to consume. I don't think it's some terrible, evil plan by the overlords of corporate America that are now funding Cardi B to dumb down society or dumb down black women and change the narrative and now we're we're listening to Cardi B uh you know on the Stephen Colbert show um and on SNL and and all that I mean obviously there's money behind her her label all that stuff you know that's that's old news no one's gonna argue that Cardi being at the helm a female rap does speak to the, the the public consciousness of what younger girls are going to look up to and what they will what they what they'll identify with. Um, all that being said, Azealia Banks isn't the person who should be the advocate for this. I mean, it seems like she has a problem with everybody at some point. You know, it seems like she has, she had a problem with Beyonce. She's um. She's had problems with with multiple uh, multiple female black female artists in the past. Uh, obviously, her problems that she's had with Iggy Azalea, and everybody had a problem with uh, with Iggy Azalea, and rightfully so. Um, but Cardi B, as you guys know, is um, you know she's Dominican. I, I I'm not sure. I think her father is Trinid is Trini. I think I'm not sure. Maybe I should look that up. So uh, Cardi's Dominican, and uh, Az- one of the things that uh, Azilia pointed out is that Cardi didn't start uh, identifying as a black woman until she finally got famous. Like that's when she's starting to, you know, cash in her black woman chips and say, oh, hey, I'm black now because, yes, uh, her father was Dominican and her mother was Trinidadian. Um, she's black. OK, she, she's black. Get over it, people. Get, just, just, just get get over that hump already. Get over that hump. Um, it's different here in the city. It's 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 so it's so different. I, I, I can't I can't frame it to you any any better than that. I mean, I'll get back to, to the Cardi B and the, and the Iggy Azalea thing, but I'll give you an example. I was um, I was with somebody several years ago who lived in California and uh, when I traveled out there to see to meet her family, 
I went out there to meet her father. <clears throat> and I have a very ethnic name. I'm not going to tell you what the fuck it is because you guys are fucking psychos. Um, so when I met when I met her father, her father says, why is your name? Like, that's a Mexican name. Like, why is it? <laughs> why is that your name? You know, it's it, it all depends on your region. You know, my ex, she lived in, you know, she's from Stockton, Stockton, Oakland, you know, that whole area around there. And, you know, only thing they know about Hispanics is just Mexicans. They don't see dark skinned Puerto Ricans. They don't see dark skinned Dominicans. But over here in New York City, it just you can, you point at somebody and you just assume that they're just african-american that they're you know their lineage is just to here and not uh you know one of the caribbean uh countries you'd be wrong you'd point at tons of people who you know who who are the color of fucking who are just dark you know who are as dark as lebron james and you'd be wrong you know that person's Honduran. you know that person's cuban that person so in the city it's it's a little is i don't think cardi b just just identified as a black woman i do know that she's also said offensive things um towards dark-skinned women in the past i think she's called women cockroaches you know said shit about nappy hair self-hate is real people self-hate is real from both sides from cardi's side from azalea banks side. it's just a reality of the world this is this is what you have to deal with when your ancestors were colonized and they were shipped off to different places and now you don't know what you know who's on first who's like no one knows what the fuck they are but to identify uh, to, to identify yourself with your skin first and foremost is pretty much the surest bet of how you can anchor yourself how you can ground yourself to to you know to be more of a conscious person if you just start with that If you just start with that, whatever the fuck your flag is, whatever your nationality is, wherever the fuck you were born, just ground yourself with that. You are a person of color. So see other people of color in the same tribe as you, which is not to say don't see white people or, you know, Europeans in the same, you know, they, of course, we all are of the same uh, tribe, but uh, you understand what I mean. Kill white people. Who's who who runs in the studio and says kill white people and runs out? I have no clue. But back to what these two, uh, you know, what these two were going back and forth. And they, they had a Twitter war, of course. People always have Twitter wars. That's what you know, that's the meeting of the minds. That's the, the Mensa meetings nowadays is, uh, is, is Twitter. And um, basically, uh, Banks told her she's an illiterate uh you're dumbing down the narrative of black women and Cardi just basically took the victim role or the passive role, which I think is her best play here because you're not going to win the petty war with with Azalea Banks. It's just not going to happen. Uh, the smartest thing that Cardi could have done is exactly what she did. She came out and she said, hey, I'm just being myself. If I misspell words, if I do this, if I do that, people weren't saying anything about me when I was in uh, uh Uh, love and hip-hop which is interesting of course because that's one of the reasons why people hate you is because you were on love and hip-hop people weren't speaking about you when you were on love and hip-hop because that is a cesspool of it's death it's just a just a black hole of death and if you just so happen to emerge from um uh, from the zombies of love and hip hop, then you know people will, they'll acknowledge you. But un- until then, you're 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 dead. You're John Doe or Jane Doe in your case. So um, and 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 then uh, Azalea, you know, she made some stupid. She she said one thing that was funny. She said one thing that was funny. She said, "God damn it! What did oh God see? It would be nice if I had the tweets right in front of me. I'm not gonna look at the tweets." I'm not going to do it. You guys, you guys get it. You understand a lot of pettiness going back and forth. Um, and this is what Azalea Banks does. She likes to ruffle people's feathers. Um, you know, I would argue that if, if Azalea Banks put half as much thought as she put into other artists in her own work, then I think her career would be that much more great. And when I say her career, I mean her music. I mean her music. You know, if, if, 
if she just doesn't have those people behind her, then she just doesn't have those people behind her. I mean, you guys have to understand that this shit is a this shit isn't just as simple as you have great music. It's about who you know. It's about what label you're in or who has, you know, who's backing you up, what relationships you have with certain people and all that mess. So let's not say if her career was at a certain point. Let's say her music would be better if she was more concerned um, with her own music as opposed to the, 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 the doings of, of other people. And there is another conflict, of course. There is another conflict between Funkmaster Flex and uh, Peter Rosenberg. There's some weird radio thing where Flex is, is taking shots at... At Rosenberg, which is a uh, which is a pretty easy thing for Funk Flex. And by the way, just just remember this: these two are in the very same radio station. So Flex has no boundaries whatsoever. He has no boundaries as far as um as as far as who he's willing to insult, as far as who he's willing to to go up against. He's just horrible. I mean, and and it's very easy to take shots at. At Rosenberg. It's very easy to take shots at Rosenberg because Rosenberg is white. Rosenberg is white, so you can you can really sound off like Well, let me not say it like that because Funkmaster Flex is a legend. Flex is a legend, there is no doubt about that whatsoever. So I'm not going to say so Flex can sound like he is a legend because he is indeed a legend. I mean, but it's it's just one of those things of you got to ask yourself a question with Funkmaster Flex. It's it's uh how long has Flex gone being the angry hip hop head on the radio when compared to the years where Flex was considered somebody who moved the needle within the culture? I mean, if we haven't already gone past that point a year, two, three years, we're headed towards there. And it doesn't seem like Flex is ever coming off the radio or ever going to stop getting into conflicts with people. At some point, you you just burn all that you have done with every single petty beef at one point. We, we just can't keep referring back to your glory days when you were in the tunnel, when you were putting 3,000 people in the tunnel, when you were putting out great freestyles, when you dominated New York City radio as far as hip-hop. We can't keep going back into that every time you get into some petty beef and you just want to, you know, pardon the pun, you just want to flex on people. It, it it's, it's really kind of pathetic because there are... There are people that Flex can't do that with, you know? And if you can't do that with everybody, then it's like that old adage that, uh, that, that I heard. It was, a, it was an old Caribbean lady. <clears throat> I was on the bus one time, and uh, there was a Caribbean lady uh, talking to, I don't, I, don't, I don't know who the fuck it was. It was a friend or her sister or whatever, and, and they were working out some details of some story. And then there was a long pause between them, and I was lucky enough to not have my headphones on. And she goes, a monkey know what tree to climb. And that was so genius. That was so genius. A monkey knows what trees not to climb. You know? I was in South Bronx Job Corps years ago, a government program with a lot of fucking low lives. I was one of them. Um... But uh, I had a I had a RA on my dorm, <clears throat> older gentleman, who said something similar. He would say because he would notice that you know people would pick on other people, but not pick on others. And he used to say, "If you want to be tough, be tough against everybody." That's all I'm saying. And he always used to put his hands up, sort of like surrendering, <laughs> like that's all I'm saying. If you want to be tough, be tough with everybody. Because I see a lot of guys out here. <laughs> so he was sort of that old head on the dorm. It was like a fifty-something-year-old guy. Uh, but he was great. I mean, it's it's basically the, the same thing. You know, if you want to be tough, be tough against everybody. Uh, if you want to throw weight, throw weight against everybody. Um, so all this stuff looks really foolish when you're taking it out on Rosenberg, who, to Rosenberg's credit, he's one of the only people on New York City radio at all who ever discusses hip-hop, uh, underground hip-hop acts 
that shit certainly doesn't happen on on power 1051 i mean if i'm wrong about that somebody please correct me in the comment section below um you know rosenberg has really be, been an advocate for those smaller artists and he's attempted to break artists um so i'll give him credit for that and you know flex wanted to point out something about the rosenberg not uh not knowing his history or whatever the fuck and and i and, and i do agree with flex on that because rosenberg sometimes makes references that sometimes i'm i'm kind of like wondering you you're old enough to like really remember that you know it, it's it's really weird because being being of of you know dominican background all the music that i listened to from up until the age of 12 was all spanish music i had a relationship with music that i hated you know, I, I think that's part of the reason why the, w one of the things that contributed into me going into musical commentary was the fact that I had a lot to say about the music that I heard the first 10, 12 years of my life was just music that I just I did not I did not enjoy. You know, I related to uh, to FIFO from Dead and Hip Hop. Shout out to Dead and Hip Hop. Um, and I'm going to get uh, guess in here. I'm, I'm, I definitely have to get BZ in here. Um uh, he hit me up on Instagram. I definitely got to get him in here. Um, but shout out to FIFO. Uh, FIFO, who's of Cuban descent, mentioned that years ago on a video. Where, and I was like, dude, I, I, I'm with you. He said, I, the first few years of my life, I didn't fucking, I didn't listen to hip hop. I, my parents were just playing merengue. They were just playing salsa. That's all I heard. I didn't li start listening to hip hop until maybe junior high school. You know, so... Um, so when there are records that are referenced, like maybe like in the 80s, the late 80s, I didn't come in in that. I was born in 82. So my hip hop knowledge, my strong hip hop knowledge, I would say would go from 92 and and beyond. Maybe it gets a lot more accurate and a lot more in tune in the mid 90s to the you know to the to the 2000s to the early 2000s that bulk of like 10 15 years or whatever the fuck that's when it's like really red i know most albums that came out i know most artists at least vaguely i'm aware of conflicts i'm a, i'm aware of some stories and you know uh, stuff like that but sometimes when rosenberg references stuff i'm like dude you you fucking like you know this this goes back to my my whole thing about you know just just music being a book you know, music, if, if you haven't listened to certain things and you go back to it, then that's cool. That's cool. But just remember that that's what you did. You went back and you listened to it. OK, not to say not to discredit you, not to say that the music means any less to you or you didn't get it. But you have to remember that you're digging in the crates and listening to music from years before and not having an understanding what that music meant when it was being released so if you go back and listen to albums you can digest those albums but at the end of the day that's all you're really getting is the music you don't that that, that that's all you really get you understand so um yeah i mean that that conflict is just ridiculous it's it's just it's retarded and um this is what funk master flex does he can't do this with charlamagne he can't do this with charlamagne that's who i was uh you know i was referring to uh that you can't do it against everybody. I mean, he's tried to do it, but it just, it, it, it doesn't work now. I mean, now when we're speaking of, you know, this word that gets thrown around way too much, uh, when we're speaking of the culture, Charlemagne just has him beat. Uh, you can talk about the days of your, all you want of your flex. You can talk about that all you want. But if we're talking about actual reach and actual influence, and having a voice that's heard and not just a voice that's heard but a but a voice that's necessary a voice that once in a while you know Charlemagne will say some stupid shit but for the most part Charlemagne's voice is very needed and it's very intelligent so Flex can't do that with him uh is this a fake beef I have no clue uh if it is um then I don't know fucking uh, t tell me tell me it's a f tell me it's a fake beef uh, th th t toss a, a, a Carcino video my way. And by, by the way, um, to, to reference, you guys know I don't give a shit. I, I, me I mention um, content creators all the time. I don't really give a shit. I don't play this game that content creators always play. I've, I've listened to a few Carcino videos um, 
over the past few weeks and I notice I notice a a trend in his videos that's so annoying. It's so annoying. Uh, he'll start off a video and it'll go, you guys have been telling me to talk about this. So I'll talk about it because y'all, it's like, dude, as a content creator, just, just say it. Just, just, just talk about what you're going to talk about. If you, if you continue to claim that there are waves of people coming at you and, and telling you, please talk about this. I don't know. Is that like to, to boost your ego or to, to try to act like you're not really interested in it? Uh, if you're not really interested to talk about it anyway, like, I don't know what the point of that is. It's like, oh, I just want to do it because y'all, because cause, y'all telling me to do it. It's like, no, no, you want to talk about it. You want to talk about it. I mean, what are you getting like two or three people sending you an email or sending you a tweet? It's 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 stupid. It's foolish. If you want to talk about a topic, just talk about a topic. Um, Speaking of all the content creators, there, there's some content creators that you guys definitely should should watch. Um. There's also somebody who I enjoy. His name is Caster Badman. Caster Badman. Caster sounds like he's in his car all the time. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's probably in his car every time he makes a video. Um, but Caster does does some good commentary. Uh, you guys should check out his channel. Uh, also... Uh, Mr. Telefero is also a good, he, he's a, gr a great hip hop channel. If it, you know, when it comes to, to hip hop news, when it comes to hip hop news, sort of like those, uh, you know, your Dom is lives and your, and your DJ academics, he basically does the same thing. He tries to give you briefings. Uh, but I think it comes from a good place. He also does good interviews too. So that's also a good channel that you should check out. Try to share the rock here, you know. We we try we, we we try we try to put you on to different people because this is this is a community. This is a community, ladies and gentlemen. We're okay. It's about forty six minutes, and I promised you this one would be longer than the other ones. The other ones are normally what uh, thirty two minutes or something like that. I feel like we should wrap this up with something. I don't know. You know what I should do? I should I have. I have a dime bag here and I have a bowl and I like, I like using bowls. I like using bowls because number one, I don't know how to roll. And I say that and I hang my head because I should know how to roll, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm horrible. Also, what I like about a bowl too is you can spread the weed out a lot longer, a longer period of time. Uh, I will quote the great, the great George Carlin, uh, who's discussing weed and how he used to have a relationship with weed that was toxic. You know, at some points you you do too much of it and then you see the bottom, just like any other drug. Uh, if you do too much of it, it's not pleasurable anymore. It's a, it just becomes toxic. So. George Carlin said in his later years, in his uh, 50 or 60 years of age, he said, so now all I need is one, one hit, one hit every few hours. And then after that, it's punch up time. And after that, he can start writing. And I feel the same way. I feel like you take one to two hits and you can maneuver after that. You can move about your day better. But this, you know, this whole business of just getting high as shit constantly is just, it, I, I just can't deal with it. So what I might do is I might take a hit here if I'm able to get a hold of this because it actually is quite, quite sticky. Um, no, nah, I'm not going to deal with it. That, that's that's just going to take way too much effort on my part. Uh, so there's been a lot of changes in my life over the past, uh, I'd say, week and a half. Uh, that's. It's been pretty interesting, you know, a lot, a lot for the better, just a lot of things that have happened for the better, a lot of mental things for, for the better. And, uh, guys don't, don't ever, don't ever, don't dismiss your mental state because that's always the most important thing. Your mental state is always the most important thing. You always got to stay on top of that. Don't compromise that. Don't panic because of your circumstances don't panic because your circumstances can be great and your circumstances can be horrible but what's going to remain a constant 
is you have to maintain your mental stability because you can lose your fucking shit in a penthouse just like you can do it in a studio apartment. You can lose your mind in both scenarios. So it's absolutely important that you stay on top of it, that you fucking exercise regularly, that you read or listen to audiobooks. I'm not I'm not the biggest reader myself, but I do listen to uh to audiobooks. Just enhance your mind with brain food. It's it's so it's so terrible to be in the age that we live in now and just consume nothing but Netflix shows, to consume nothing but uh, you know internet memes, to just consume empty calories of shit. You have to take in things that are that are gonna satiate you mentally. Uh, there are certain YouTube channels that I always stay locked into that are great for creative thought and when i mean creative thought i mean it in everything you know i mean it in everything i don't just mean it in youtube (laughs) i mean it in just every single part of your life your personal life your family life your career your health i cannot stress enough the importance of listening to content and extracting that information and painting it in another area of your life. That's what creativity is all about. That's what creativity is all about. I had a conversation with somebody recently and I and I I told her I said, "Listen, your this is just a a person who just goes to work. Um she doesn't do much, doesn't have many hobbies, doesn't have any hobbies at all. She just goes to work, uh, occasionally goes to the gym and um I was having a drink with her and I, and I tell her, listen, you're a very creative person. You're a very creative person. You should look into something. You know, you should look into that. You know, and I know, I know, I know that sounds crazy too. It's like, you should look into creativity. Like it's a, like it's a job field. But I think creativity is something that people just don't understand. People automatically think that it has something to do with painting. It has something to do with photography. It has something to do with singing. And it does. And it does, but it also has, it has its practical applications as well. You know, you can be creative and have a practical job. You can, you can do that just as long as you think about it dynamically. You know, it's possible because as soon as I told her that she sort of, she rejected it. She was like, oh no, no, me? No, 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 no. That's that, 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 that. I, I, I don't, I don't do any of that. I just, I just go to work and da, 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 da. And it's and, and it's amazing to me how people just they just overlook it. I went out, I went on a date with a good man. Look, this is now this is real shit right here. This is this is real, real, real shit. And if you've been listening to this this long, just understand what I'm gonna tell you right now. Because I went on a date with somebody about three three years ago, and um she had just told me that the day before we met, she just so happened to watch the movie The Secret or the documentary The Secret. And although I think there's a lot of uh, valuable things in The Secret, I do think that people take it too literal. So um, it's it just it just makes you lazy and think you know you'll think that everything has to literally come to you and you have to do no work. And I, I have s- such an issue with that. Um, so she tells me that she was just uh, she was just watching The Secret and her life is just headed in such a different direction. And she spent the whole date, probably because she didn't like me. It was one of the worst dates I ever had. But you always learn something in the process. One of the worst dates I ever had. And I'm sitting across from this woman. And she's telling me how horrible her job is, how much she hates it, uh how she would rather be doing something else. She's been working there for too long and all this shit, just whining and whining and whining to the point where I had to sort of, in a douchey way, I kind of of had to say, so talk to me about things that you do like, you know, because she wasn't asking me any questions. It was just one of those dates. It was just, it was just a date, uh, you know, where a woman, you know, you, you keep throwing questions, throwing questions, but you don't get any back. Um, it, it, it happens. It's part of being a man. We have to equip ourselves with conversational skills, 
Uh, we have to be providers. We have to be event planners because we got to set everything up. We got to pay for it. We got to do everything. We got to do the talking. That's just how it works. That's the game, baby. If you don't like it, get the fuck out of here. Um, so I'm equipped. I'm very good at dates. I'm, I'm very good at conversation. So um, while we're talking about all this, I tell her, hey, tell me about something that you do like. And she says, well, I sew. And then I went, hmm. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really good at it. And then she shows me all these pictures on her phone of things that she's sewn. She's sewn for her dog. She's sewn a bunch of shit for family members. She's knitted hats and sweaters. And you know, I'm sitting here thinking, so you're just gonna ignore this? You're just going to totally bypass this, and you didn't mention this until this point, like two or three hours into the into the the date. That's when she mentioned it, and it really speaks to people ignoring their strengths. I think people ignore their strengths all the time, and that's one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is to ignore your strengths. School, I believe, is school adds to it because because in when when you're being educated you are constantly told to improve what you're not good at if you got an a in english if you got a b in math and you got a c minus in science you aren't told hooray you're good at math you're good at english you got to improve on science and work at it and get really good at it when science may be a topic that's just doesn't work for you. I mean, biology, the way I remember it, you have to learn a lot of terms. Maybe that mnemonic sort of memory isn't part of your intelligence package. You know what I'm saying? So creativity and intelligence, um, well, I don't want to confuse, I don't want to confuse it too, but I mean, let, let's just stay on, on creativity, but it's, that's pretty much how people feel it's designed. Like you have to improve on the things that you're not good at. And I think it's the exact opposite. I think it's the exact opposite. I think you should double down on what you're good at. This girl completely ignores the fact that she's very good at knitting. And when I say that, I don't mean, I'm, I'm not one of these people that think that means you should open up a knitting business. You might not be suited for that. But my point is, Dive deep into your knitting. Consider your knitting. Get into the practice of it. Turn that shit into a meditation. You know, think dynamically when you're knitting. Think about things as you're knitting. And you may find other things within that. There's something in that world. Unless it is just a literal, hey, maybe you should just you know, maybe you should just open up an online store where you knit things and find out how to market that through fucking Instagram or whatever the fuck, you know, that could be a literal, um, a li uh, there could be a literal way at looking at it. But my point is, is when you're, you're, you're paying way too much attention at what you're not good at, what you don't like, if it's your job, which was this girl in this case, she wasn't pay she was paying way too much attention to that and not paying enough attention to her strengths and i haven't spoken to that girl in two or three years we just went on about two dates and uh and nothing after that so i don't know where she's at now in life but i don't know if she still does it but i wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't do it anymore you know sort of like the other person that i was speaking to when i told them that they were creative i was I felt like I could give this person some form of encouragement because it's somebody who I know very well. I'm certainly not one of these people that's going to beat you over the head if if I'm on a date with you or if I just met you. I'm not going to tell you, hey, you should knit. Like, I'm not going to fucking preach to you. I'm not, I'm not going to act like I know what's best for you. In fact, what I'll do is get on my podcast and I'll rave about it. But this is two, three years later. I mean, you got to give me, you know, some form of credit. But that's that's my point, guys. Uh Whatever you're strong at, pay attention to that. Pay attention to what you're strong at and what you'll normally find that whatever strengths you have, the people around you lack those strengths. That's not a discredit to those people because, to my point, 
those people wouldn't try to attempt what you do because that would be them working on their weaknesses. They work on their own strengths. You'll find that the people in your own circles have strengths that you don't have. And if you are within circles of people that don't have many strengths or don't exhibit those strengths in any way, shape, or form, get another fucking circle. crumbling up my dollar here bars nigga bars bars over everything seriously find another circle that's all i'm gonna tell you all right we're getting up close to an hour here i i, I think i've ran my mouth uh enough this is enough for for two episodes to make up for the fact that i didn't do one last week or, th- uh, or the week before i did a video last week i've given you i've given you videos i mean you guys have to excuse me my life has been um, at least in my mind, my life has been everywhere because I'm putting certain things in place, certain possibilities in place, and it's very exciting. Um, so uh, you'll forgive me if I seem to be disconnected uh, from the podcast world, but I'm still here. I'm still here for you, still fucking showing up. You can always send your donations to d.podcast at gmail.com on uh, PayPal. The link will be in the description below. All your uh, donations are greatly appreciated but this was yet another edition of the d dot podcast please 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 i cannot stress this enough if you have listened to this video long enough like it or share it send it to somebody do whatever the fuck you want with it okay how's that but change your circle if that applied to you i'll see you guys next time